Conservative Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema has decided to travel to Europe for some more fundraising. This time with American expats living in Europe. Now, her team didn't really want to share too many details about what was going on, but here's what we know. A spokesman for Cinema said that she had participated in fundraising for the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, but declined to say where or provide any additional details. One person briefed on the matter said the event had occurred in Paris. Now there was another Democratic or Democratic Party fundraiser in Europe as well. The chairman of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, Senator Gary Peters of Michigan, is also in Europe this week and headlined a dinner on Wednesday in London with contribution levels as much as thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars, and that's according to a copy of an invitation. Now keep in mind these are people in Europe, Americans living in Europe, I'm guessing they would have you know, less of an impact. They would experience less of an impact on these policies unless, unless they're corporate executives or people who make ding, a lot ding, of ding, money ding, ding. <laughs> off of this rigged economic system. So most of the people that are there are corporate executives that are at the their French subsidiary or different subsidiaries. In Europe, and so because why bother going all the way to Paris and London? It's because there's tons of corporate executives in those European capitals, and so. But there's no question as to who's attending the fundraisers. Every single one of them is super wealthy. For most of these fundraisers, thousand dollars is the bare minimum you can give, and what Anna is it up to? Yeah, thirty-six thousand five hundred is the max you can give. So they're going to. Visit wealthy donors, which then, of course, I mean, leads to the noting the. I don't know that it's the irony, and maybe it's perfectly appropriate for Kristen Cinema, but Cinema would not talk to a voter that was right next to her, but she'll fly all the way to Paris to talk to a wealthy donor. Hundred percent. Now, who do you think she's working for? Everyone that doesn't work in media knows that she's working for her donors. Uh, so I'm going to tell you how much money she's raised uh, in a minute. But before I do, I also want to talk a little bit about how the media has covered the disagreement within the Democratic Party in regard to the passage of the $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. Now. Uh, I think that the corruption angle is the angle. It's the most important part of this story because you want to understand the motivations of the conservative Democratic lawmakers who are in opposition to passing the widely popular $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. And so let's go to Don Lemon of CNN, who seems to be completely clueless in regard to the corruption angle. Let's watch. But just nine months later, too many Democrats are fighting each other instead of, oh, I don't know, maybe getting something done. It all comes down to this. Democrats have to prove that they can get something done and they have to do it before the midterms. But Democrats have to get real and figure out what their bottom line is. They need to get out of their own way. They need to push the president's agenda across the finish line without getting so bogged down in the details, in winning small little battles. The reality is, is they're not all going to get everything that they want. Progressives, you're not going to get everything that you want. But if you allow this moment to pass and pass and not get anything accomplished, then you're gone. Then Joe Biden's gone, then the Democrats are gone, and then you won't have a chance. Same thing for conservative Democrats and the moderates. No one gets everything that they want. And they cannot let Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, two members of the president's own party, torpedo his agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why they pay him the big bucks. I mean, that in depth analysis and commentary. Yeah. That, that's it? That's all you've got? Like, please get along, you guys need to get something passed. No, talk about motivations. Talk about the motivating factor behind the disagreement that we're seeing in Congress right now. But look, I feel like anytime the topic of corruption gets brought up on CNN, get off it, get off it, get off it, get off it. Like, I mean, it, it always happens with the one exception of Dana Bash asking Joe Manchin about his corruption only because AOC called Manchin out on it. But other than that, CNN stays away from the corruption angle at any and all costs. 
There was only one anchor that I've ever seen talk about it at length. It was Rick Sanchez and, and he was fired based on theoretically other reasons a couple of weeks later. So um, look, when um, Ashley Banfield at MSNBC uh, did an anti-Iraq war speech right before it began, they not only took her off air, but they moved her office into a closet. Why do they do that? Oh to God. send a message to the rest of the anchors. You are not to ever talk about reality and the actual news. So what's the actual news here? That the Democrats are too wonky and they're bogged down on the details because they're all policy nerds and trying to get a little extra thing that's irrelevant? No, that's not the story at all. That doesn't just tell the story a little wrong. It misdirects you into the exact opposite narrative. Bingo. So the actual story is Cinema and Mansion are holding up the bill to get more donor money. And they're and the Democrats don't need a single Republican vote. They don't need the parliamentarian. They could end the filibuster tomorrow. That's a fact. Everybody knows that fact. They're choosing not to. And they say it's because of Senate tradition of protecting the beloved filibuster that was mainly used to block anti lynching laws. Those are all facts. So they're saying are the etiquette, the etiquette in the Senate is more important than all of our voters. Now that's absurd, everybody knows that's absurd. Well, but to be fair, I honestly think Don Lemon doesn't know. I honestly think that most cable news anchors have no idea. They were, they're paid actors, they're news actors and their script was written for them. They read the script and they barely know the news. No, the Democrats are not negotiating with Republicans. They're, not, they're also not negotiating with each other. They're negotiating with their own donors. Mansion and Cinema represent the donor class. And so, for example, when Cinema says, I don't want any of the healthcare provisions, she then gets checks from the healthcare industry. It's not complicated. If you think that those two things are not related, Cinema getting nearly a million dollars and then making sure that that provision that she got paid for is no longer in the bill, and you think those two things are not connected, news is literally the last thing you should be doing. <laughs> Yeah, totally. No, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, the only like checks and balances that cinema cares about is the checks she's getting and the balance of her fundraising efforts, right? Like, like take a look at this. Cinema entered July with $3.5 million in her reelection account. Good luck with that, cinema. Good luck with that. She's up for reelection in 2024. We're not gonna let people forget about what she's up to and what she's been doing recently. I want to just real quick, Shane Goldmacher, I want to give him credit. That's the second time he covered money in politics for the New York Times. Almost never happens. So thank you for being on that beat and actually giving people real news. Absolutely. I also want to go to someone who actually does understand the corruption angle because he's a longtime Democratic strategist. That's James Carville. He had his own commentary in regard to the reconciliation bill. Let's watch. We're asked, Democrats in Congress are asked to do very popular things. All right, this is not gonna take much courage to, to, to negotiate prescription drug prices. It doesn't take much courage to raise taxes on the wealthy. It doesn't take much courage to expand health care. It doesn't take much courage. We just got to, somebody's got to get in the room and say, okay, we wanted to do 10 things. We can do five, less duties five, and then take the other five and run them in 2022. You're not going to move any further than Joe Manchin or Christian Sinema. So, so quit this idiotic protesting and hounding them and tell President Biden, get him in the room, get the speaker in there, get the majority leader. Let's hammer something out. And what we don't get, let's go for it in 2022. Fascinating. So Mansion and Cinema are the ones who get to be the arbiters of what gets passed and what doesn't pass, right? So if progressives in the House do what Mansion and Cinema are doing, and mind you, the progressives aren't the ones that are taking massive checks from pharmaceutical companies, from the private health insurance industry. They're the ones who actually want to pass the policies, pass the agenda that Joe Biden wanted to pass. This is Biden's agenda. But no, I mean, we got to go with what the corrupt Democratic senators demand. They're the ones who get to be the arbiters. And Carville knows what's up. He knows what's up. He knows about the money, okay? Don Lemon might be a clueless cable news actor, but Carville knows about the money. And he, of course, is misdirecting, just like you mentioned, Jake. Okay, so 
Couple of quick things on Carville. So he's right the Democrats did a terrible job of selling this bill. He's right that the bill is incredibly popular. Um, so as I was listening to the interview, I'm like, so far so good. And the other day he said something that's true too, maybe he's reformed. But then he ruins the whole thing by turning around at the end and going, and that's why we should do the least amount possible that Manchin and Cinema want. But wait a minute, if it's incredibly popular, why would we do the least amount? That doesn't make any sense. Why would we take out some of the most popular provisions? For example, uh, they want uh, the provisions about healthcare taken out. But those poll at 90% by your own logic, James Carville. Why wouldn't we do the AOC and Jayapal position instead of the mansion and cinema position? He would find that outrageous because he's like, <laughs> listen to progressives because they're incredibly popular and they represent our voters and that's a fact based on the polling. No, that's an outrageous position. Of course, we should do what mansion and cinema want so we could all collect the checks. Oh, but you forgot to mention that part on television, James. That was convenient. Yeah, and by the way, did Ari, who I like as a person, a wonderful guy overall, but did Ari challenge him on that? No, because you're not allowed to challenge people on MSNBC. You're not allowed to talk about corruption. All of those so-called progressive anchors, let alone all the Republican anchors on there. Do any of them talk about, guys, this is obvious. They're raising money and then they're taking out provisions. They voted against the minimum wage increase, they went to the National Restaurant Association, both Mansion and Cinema, and collected their checks. So did MSNBC anchors say, James Carville, are you insane? You know what the real deal is, you know what this is about. Why are you misleading our audience? No, zero, why? Because they're on MSNBC and that's not allowed in corporate media. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.